in my opinion with JNM. Jonathan, what's up, buddy? Yeah, I'm stoked, right? Because the Bears won the Super Bowl, right? Because we're world champions, right? Yeah. No, we're not. No, we're a long way away. That was a that was a hopeful wishing, but we, no. We suck, don't we? Yeah, I mean, I, I stopped watching them a long time ago, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Once Brian Urlacher left, that was kind of... Wow, that was a long time yeah. ago, too. I mean, I have to see him every day on my on my ride to work because he's, oh, he's on those billboards. That hair, uh, yeah, that hair implant, not implant thing, the hair restoration. Rest, thing. I, I might be going over there soon. I'm good. maybe. You no, you're too far gone. <sighs> Don't say stuff like that, man. <laughs> Come on, gone. man. I mean, I'm very comfortable. At least I'm comfortable being bo- blonde, being bald. <laughs> unlike LeBron yeah. James, who's yeah. still hanging on to hopes and dreams, oh, but whatever. Bro, game. Yeah. Jeez. By the way, uh, can I say something? Sure. These guys are going to look a little crazy because I don't think the music was uh, being. Oh, like, they, they're not going to hear it on thing, their, on their yeah, live feed. I got it. That's a, but that's all right. <clears throat> Anyways, we have, crazy. we have <laughs> no, two no, no, guests it's today. Not crazy at all. We have two guests today. There was music. Yes. There, Stop it, interrupting me while okay. I'm introducing sorry, guests, sorry about Jonathan. That. I'm kidding. Um, we have two guests today. Uh, both of them are actors. Um, I've met them. I met uh, Wendy in, in Concrete Rose. Um, Enrique, I'm meeting for the first time, but he was part of Concrete Rose as well. Um, very known around the community. And um, I'll let them introduce themselves again after I said their names, but they can just go. Hi, my name is Wendy Acosta. Thank you for inviting me to your podcast. No problem, this is actually no problem. my first time on a podcast. Is it really? Yes. Uh, I'm, pull the mic a little closer to you so, so you don't I'm, have to lean so far. There you go. I'm pretty stoked. Are you? Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. That's I'm excited. That's awesome. So. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Enrique Kings. I am also happy to be here. We appreciate you guys having us. And, uh, you know, let's see what's going on in Chicago. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, so I guess the obvious question, right? The obvious question. We're all actors here except Jonathan, of course. Sure. I, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, uh, Wendy, let's start with you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what made you want to act? Um, like where, And where'd you go? Um, and we'll start there. Well, I've always wanted to act as a child. As a child. I've okay. always had the dream of being an actress. However, I had the majority of Latinos. I'm first generation American. So my parents didn't have a lot of where to go to places. And they worked so much. I always felt bad asking for much. So okay. I, but I've, that's how long I wanted to be. And then when I graduated high school, I attended Second City. Okay. And I always, even when I take classes now, I can only get to a certain level until I just get so filled with anxiety that I can't. But, but that was like only, I kind of figured that I couldn't do improv. So I switched to script and I went to Vegabond and that's how my schooling began. I went to, I always wanted to be an actress, always wanted to. Then took Second City classes and then went to Vagabond. And I also went to Audition Studios. And I love, I felt more comfortable with script than I did improv. And that's where it solidified my love for acting. So, but I've always wanted to act. But then it just made it so when I started doing script work. Awesome. It was in concrete. She was concrete. Rose. I was in concrete. <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug. Good, yeah, there you go. Shameless plug. Enrique. Yes. You, sir. And get a little closer to the mic for me. Oh, let's see. Where did this all start? I mean, I'll make it brief. Um, I was Michael Jackson in sixth grade thriller. <laughs> Were you really? Yeah, man. And that's where it all kind of started for me. I loved it. It was uh, being on stage and just all of it. It's, it's amazing. Oh. I once, once you know, I I was able to do that. It, there's a bug, right? There's a bug, and it bit me and. That was it for me, man. It's a, it's all I've ever wanted to do. Michael Jackson did it for you. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael did it. Jackson he can do that. He can do that. He can, yeah, he, he can he have that effect it, on people. He can have that effect. No, no, no. But seriously, no. I, I, it was a, it was a sixth grade talent show. It was the first thing I ever did, and and yeah, man, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was great. I was Michael Jackson. I swear, man. I, I knew every. <laughs> all of it. I'm not kidding you, man. The whole shit in the lane. Yeah, that's cool. No deal. Lead. I did, man. I That's swear. awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Did you go study anywhere? Or? Uh, I studied at uh, the uh, Chicago um, Actors uh, in, well, obviously here in Chicago. And then I've done, dude, I'm 50 years old, man. So I have a lot of experience just in a lot of worldly things. You awesome. Know? That's yeah. awesome. That's so awesome. So it's, it's definitely helped me in what I do. Awesome. So what, okay, so you did some schooling. Do, do you think... 
because like I I I hear a lot of people talk about you know up and coming actors that you know eh, I'm, I don't want to go take classes I don't want to do that. Um, what would you say to someone like that? Would you tell them? Would you advise them to, or yeah. would you advise them not? I say yes. I learned a lot of range from going to classes, so I would say yes. Yes. I, I agree. I mean, I think, um, again, because I'm a little older, I have a lot of world experience, you know, so you're able to take those different experiences and, and bring it into your acting. So a lot of especially younger people, um, they don't have that, you know, so they definitely have to go to classes. But I think everyone should go to classes. I, I wonder. Mean, I think it's a good combination of both yeah. because you need you need obviously when you act you bring you bring your experiences with you mm -hmm. right because that's how you get your emotions out mm -hmm. or whatever we tie it into what's happened in life but i also believe that having a concrete foundation concrete rose shameless plug um <laughs> a concrete foundation is um is important yeah. you know you need to have somewhere to start you know mm -hmm. like you, you got to have tools yeah you know and you don't learn tools you can learn tools and stuff in in, in acting if you're part of that world right so like let's say you've worked as a camera person or a lighting person or whatever, you see it so you can pick it up. But if you're not exposed to it, how do you get those tools? Yeah. You know, you have to go to class. Yeah. You kind of have to learn the, the ABCs of it <clears throat> and, and you then add your break, twist to it. Yeah. You definitely have to learn how to break down your character, like feelings, who they were, maybe their backstory, how they feel in that moment, or how they would feel in the script. Yeah. I think that, that has to do a lot. From yeah, school. I, I think the coolest uh, thing that I did was I was in a play um, with Mary Q. Angel. She was the writer and we it was an it was like literally an intensive crash course to being in a play. It was three months and it was so grueling. And there was definitely times that I wanted to quit because it was just that intense. But to finish it, to be on stage and to hear the crowd it, it's so it's so it just fills you. You know what I mean? It, it literally fills you. And it, it's so satisfying. So tell him he doesn't want to do it. <gasps> I don't like that? stage. Oh, I'm, I'm terrified of stage. Dude, there's tell nuts. Him, wrong terrified. With I almost feel like how Wendy with? feels like it's like I, 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 the concept of, you know, having a script and having time and having takes to prepare for something. It's a little different than I mean, obviously you prepare for stage, right? Because you have to memorize whatever, Rehearsal. all that stuff. But it's different. Because you don't have that uh, that safety net per se. Like the safety net in film is like, yeah. okay, cut, do it again. Yeah. I mean, in, in live, I mean, mind you, and it could help because that could be like the reaction that you need at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Because everything might be a little different every time. But it's like this, I have this fear of of stage. I don't know why. Yeah. I think it's because it's, uh, I'm, I have a fear of like fucking up really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm when sorry, you guys can cuss all you want yeah. on this podcast, by the way. You can say whatever I you mean, want. <laughs> it's, it's definitely scary, but, you know, it's like something that I've always taught my son and, and my son and I share this is we have free throws. You know, that that's a that's a, a saying a little closer to the mic. That's that's a saying that we have in our house is we have free throws. You know, and, and what I mean by that is literally when the game is when the game's on the line, um, we hit free throws, man. I, I can't. Yeah, there's there's like truly LeBron. Like LeBron. So uh, unlike LeBron. Unlike, who cannot, who unlike LeBron. Hit but seriously, man. <laughs> and and that's why man. when you put yourself in that situation to be on stage and and there is no fail, man. It's just let's go. You, you know, know, you know what I think I've, I've started to realize is. It's a comfort thing, <clears throat> right? Because when we all start, I mean, we, you know, we all started at some point, you know, nerves are huge. Mm. You know, you you, you kind of, you know, you're shaking, whatever. You, you, it's hard to remember things or whatever. But it's crazy how how you over time you develop a sense of confidence. I mean, you're still nervous and you're excited, mm. but it's not the, it's not as bad. Like you say, with free throws, for example, I play basketball yeah. my entire life. So like me for me to play basketball in front of a couple hundred people is not a big deal. I've done it before. Mm -hmm. I, I know what the pressure is, you know, what's there, what's not, because mm -hmm. I've done it so much. But mm -hmm. it's like, I remember my, my like my first audition, like, holy crap, I couldn't even like hold the paper straight. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and I look back and I'm like, God damn, I was terrible. Like, why did I do that? Like, what the hell was wrong with me? You know, like that kind of thing. But I mean, it's funny. It's, it's an exciting ride. Yeah. I guess is what I'm trying to get at. You know, <laughs> do you remember your your first time, your uh, first audition? Auditioning? Yes, it was for. It was marvelous, right? It was <laughs> great, right off the bat. You were amazing, right off the bat. You booked it. Put and some put some context into that question first. <laughs> <laughs> What's, wrong What's wrong? Oh, your first time. I, get <laughs> <laughs> I stayed on subject. 
There you see. Us <laughs> two so were laughing. We got it. Uh-huh. 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 Do, you, do you remember your first, your first time auditioning? Thank you. All right. I remember my first time auditioning was for Maurice D. Prophet's play. Play, um, and I remember standing in front of him, and it was actually Benita who were at the table, and I memorized the whole thing at home. And it took days to memorize it. When I got to it, my hand starts to shake and I black out. I, I remember lines in my head, but my mouth just forgot, forgot all talk. of them. I was like, <laughs> I'm a pro. <laughs> I just can't <laughs> tell right now. <laughs> but I know those feelings. And the more you do it, they start to fade away. And I've noticed that. And I, that's the that's the sweet spot. I one of my goals were like I want to get to a spot in rehearsing or auditioning where I don't get the the shakes. Where it's comfortable, right? Yes. Where you can enjoy the ride. Yes. You yeah, know? But what about yourself? Yeah, I mean, look, it's I get nervous, but it's like I'm so prepared that it, it, I. I'm telling you, man, you turn on the camera and it's just time to go. It's, it's muscle like if you've done, if work. you've done your out. work, you've done your study, you've, you've studied yeah. your character, you know who it is that you're bringing, you know who's there because you're no longer yourself, you know? So when you become that person, it, 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 I'm nervous, but it's just time to go, man. Yeah. There, you know, there's money being spent. You know, there's people out there. They're, they're, yeah. you know, man, yeah. there, there's I mean, money. A major production. That's mm-hmm. money. Yeah, man. You, you have to be ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, not, Uh-oh. Not, who's yeah. vibrating? John, not is that me. you? No. No? no. Uh-huh. John, no. Uh, you're oh, the sorry. guilty party most of the time. <laughs> Anyways, um, I agree with you. I mean, prep yeah. is, prep is, prep is a, yeah. a big thing. Um, I guess what I meant was more like when you haven't experienced that ever, and it's a new thing. It's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It is overwhelming. Like, mm-hmm. I, and it's funny because, like, I I remember being super nervous for my first audition. Like, mm-hmm. super fucking stupid nervous, right? And I haven't done much work professionally, but like, my biggest thing, my biggest thing that I hang my hat on is that I had a scene with J.K. Simmons. Cool, right? Nice. Oscar winner. Like, those are the people we want to work with, right? Yeah. Right. We all want that one Oscar winner that we want to work with, right? So, ironically. I was a lot less nervous working with him than doing my first audition, which was for the Paul or whatever. Mm-hmm. I remember what school it was, which I mean, yeah, it was, uh, it meant something, but it wasn't the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting paid to do this and I got to perform. And over here, I'm just doing this just to start, but I'm shaking over here, sweating bullets, forgetting was, my lines. Like that was his aura, man. His aura kept you calm. Dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. I was talking, uh, one more question. We'll do this real question. Cause this one's interesting. And I want you guys to take it. When you guys watch films now, a days, <laughs> is it hard for you to watch films now? Horribly hard, man. Is it? Explain. Yeah. Please explain that. Yeah. I, well, it's, it's, I don't see, I don't, I have to watch the film if it's whatever film it is a couple different times, because I know that that first time I'm looking at actors, I'm thinking about where it was cut, how it was cut, where the editing came from, who directed it. It's just everything, man. It's so weird, you know? It's, it's so rude. And then you're. Movies for me. Yeah, because, yeah. And then you see if someone. And they could have done a better job. Oh, God. You know what I mean? Me. It's like, me. wow, what a great. Damn. Yeah. You know, it, it's stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult to watch movies now. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it, what about you, Wendy? I like to compare the actor to myself in a way, weird okay. way. I'm like, I favor a lot of actresses and one of them specifically I can think of right now is Jessica Chasen and she did Eyes of Tammy Faye. My gosh, she was fabulous. Awesome, I love her. And what I try to do is like almost mimic what she does because I find like when you pick or find an actor that can have that different range, you wanna be at that level. Mm. Oh, I know an actor with a lot of range, Jonathan. Uh, that actor, that fine actor, right behind him, he claims to be the best actor of all time with the most range you never ever. Claim that at all? Anyway, well, I, I just like busting his balls over the whole Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. Um, I agree with that. I agree that we we not that we should like you know find go through, like go tomorrow and find your favorite actor and try to be like that. But I think there's actors that like plant seeds in your head. Like I think there's specific actors that do that. Like for me, it's Gary Oldman. 
<gasps> Gary Oldman <laughs> plants seeds for me. And the fact that you saw how they reacted, John? Yeah, he's, he's, he's he's like, like, man, you know what? Applause for that. They know exactly who Gary Oldman is. I don't know, but she was like, like, who the hell's that? They know. They know. Look, look, they know who it is. They were like, please, oh yeah. Please say you I, don't I, know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, you so don't like, know who he is. I mean, I know who he is just because he brings him up oh. all the time. Gary, but, uh, Gary Oldman was was the guy for me because like. Now, mind you, I'm, I don't think I'll ever be like him because he's a special kind of guy. Mm-hmm. But like the way he approaches things and the way he changes everything he says, his uh, his his accent, his his demeanor, everything like he's <clears> special, <throat> you know, and like I like watching him because every every character he made is different, mm. you know. Even the small ones that he that he had in the past, like they're all different. It's crazy to look at someone like that, and that's kind of what I would I would wish I could turn out, you mm-hmm. know. But that takes dedication, practice, and and this sense of freedom. I think that's one of the things I struggle with is mm-hmm. this sense of letting go. Yeah, you know, I think that's kind of hard for most people to do. Being ugly, yes, and being okay to yes. be ugly. You know what helps? Yeah, practice. Yeah. Practice, practice helps. You know, yeah. and I'll tell you why because. I use, I use this podcast as an example because when we first started this a couple years ago, awful. If you watch the first episode, it's horrible. What? No, <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible. I'm not lying. It's horrible because I mean, you know, we're very conscious that the cameras are there and blah blah blah, and then we have to kind of, you know. But then over time, you start to just go yeah. like it is now. Like right now, I mean, I I know there's cameras there, but like they don't bug me anymore. Like I just go. I I know what I look like on screen. If I look ugly, like you said, I look ugly. I don't give a shit. Whatever it is, whatever it is, it doesn't matter anymore. But it's it's such a thing of getting comfortable. Yeah. Do you, would you say you're comfortable in your performances now? Um, like letting go, or do you still hang on to like this? I still. I mean, you know, it's. I would say that right now it completely depends. It depends on on the on the project. You know, um, I have felt the one hundred percent let go, and then I've also felt the you know seventy eh, percent, dude, you could have done better. You know, I'm my own worst critic by far. So yeah, I agree. I'm the same way. Yeah. Same way. John, how are you? You, you, you kind of got to wait until the film's over and then watch it and then like uh, judge your performance, dude. Is I got. I, you is? know, it's like. Yeah, I've I've been on obviously a couple shows and and I turn on the TV and I'm just and I'll just I literally I just don't want to watch it. You know, I don't I, I just don't. Speaking of shows, you were on Force, <laughs> right, recently? Yeah. And you yeah. you were the mechanical? I am the mechanical. I auditioned for that. You did. And you Damn. took my role. Sorry, <laughs> man. <laughs> no. That's a fighting word. I'm kidding. Yeah, um, he told me that upstairs before these guys came. But let me let me confirm. He's like, Fuck. <laughs> The total opposite. He was like, "Oh yeah, um, you know that guy that's coming. Uh, he got one of the uh, spots I auditioned for, and he was like, that that's great." And then I saw his <laughs> eyes. Like, with, 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 with that sympathy, <laughs> he was he was grinding his teeth as he said it. So I don't, I don't think he was that happy about it. I don't sorry, mind that anymore. Man. Was it, was it no, the one? No, it, okay. Let me let me very verify. It was the one where you were speaking in Spanish, yeah, and you had to tell the like you were checking a guy. For like drugs or, or somebody, well, you were checking the guy for drugs. Yeah, yeah okay, because cool. so it was the same part. It's mechanical. I mean, that's cra- <laughs> like it's it's awesome to see it. Yeah, it's great. You know, and it's it's crazy to to to. to uh, I love watching when someone else gets something. I yeah, you can be happy and jealous at the same time. No, no problem. Kind of sort. I mean, I use it as homework. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if I know if I like if I know you got the part, I'm gonna watch that episode mm-hmm. because not because I'm I'm upset that I didn't get it. I want to see what they saw. And what I didn't do, Mm. you know, just to see, okay, maybe I should have done this a little differently Mm. or whatever. Maybe I took to maybe I had the complete wrong idea. Like I just saw that recently. Um, There was an audition I had for um, ah, somebody we know just got it, too. Um, It was on forty four hundred. It was on forty four hundred recently. Damn it. Forget his name. Shoot. He played. uh, It was supposed to be. He played like a doorman. Mm-hmm. And they come up to him and they ask for the guy, and then he goes and talks to the guy and brings him up. Schwarzenegger. No, it wasn't Schwarzenegger. <laughs> um, and when I when I read for the part, I can totally see. I, I totally misrepresented what they wanted. Yeah, you know. But it's so hard because mm-hmm. they don't give you much. Yeah, you know. So like, I've a, I'm a firm believer of just making a decision. So you read what you got, and if it doesn't tell you exactly what's going on, in my head, I'm gonna make it up because I rather make a choice than than not make a choice. You know, I want to actually feel like I'm doing something versus 
I'm just reading these lines. Yeah, I, I can, to be 100% honest, Please. right? Um, Please be. When I, when I found out that I had that audition, I wasn't very familiar with the power universe. Neither was I. I literally, before the audition, I power watched every fucking episode. So when when it was time for the audition, although it was a new character and obviously it's a new show, but it's still in the power universe, mm-hmm. I then understood what the show was about. And when I went there, I had intent. You know what I mean? And and that was it. I, that's all. That's I had to study before doing that one. Okay. That, that's, yeah. that's, I mean, yeah, you have to. I mean, again, yeah. mind you, they don't, I mean, I don't know how much time you had. But like for me, on the average, they give us like what forty eight hours to do something or whatever. Once we get an audition, you know, so like you gotta try to figure it out. Like mind you, here in the city, you know, most of the auditions were for like Chicago PD, Chicago Fire. Yeah. We all kind of know what goes on in those shows, yeah. you know. But um, definitely homework is a big is a big thing. You yeah, know? yeah. What was I, your experience on that set? <laughs> well, I can I can be honest um, that Tommy, the guy who plays Tommy Joe Sikora, is one awesome dude, man. Really? Yeah, because you know what? They all want to see people succeed. They want to see a good show. They like, um, you know, they like that tight knit. Um, and he was involved in everything. That's you know, awesome. Diamond, the guy who plays Diamond, uh, Isaac Keys, dude, that dude is psh, sick. crazy sick. Yeah, man, crazy sick. Isn't, and again, this is, this is why people don't understand. Like when you tell them, how come you don't enjoy movies anymore? This is why. Yeah, because it's a different feeling when you're when you you know what goes on, right? Mm-hmm. It's like when you when you when you watch a scary movie when you're a kid, you're scared of it. But if let's say you watch Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger, right? Uh, it's scary, but then you go meet the actor. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you're kind of not scared of it because you know it's an actor, right. right? You've met him, right? So for me, that's what bugs me now. Like I know what goes on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I, I know it. I mean, obviously, every person who watches a movie knows that it's fake, right? right? It's a movie. But I can't get lost in the story because I know more about what goes on with that story. Mm-hmm. You know, I know somewhere someone's clapping a, a, a slate board. I know somewhere in there someone said cut. I know somewhere in there somebody <laughs> ran in and made a mistake or they had to yeah. fix a microphone or blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. So, like, I think that's what kind of takes away the, the lore of watching films for me. You know, John, you still enjoy films, right? Yeah. How would you feel? I'm fully immersed in. Films. How would you feel though? Like, and, I mean, obviously you're looking at it from the outside in, but would that bother you if you saw it? Uh yeah, I think so. I, it'd be some something along the lines of what you guys were saying. Like, isn't it oh, kind of like this guy could have done something better? <clears throat> I could have done something better, but I don't got those problems. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it like when you like when in Christmas if you ask for a PlayStation and then somehow you find it and you already kind of spoiled the surprise, isn't it? Yeah. Something like that, right? That's a perfect analogy. Wow. Wow. One out of uh, 75. Thank you. (laughs) Take that away. Um, So, Wendy, what, what, uh, tell me about uh, an occasion of yours. So, like, let's say when you booked, what else, what have you been on? PD. PD. So, you booked PD. Mm -hmm. How was your experience there? Since I am a core police officer, I know all the, the crew. So, it was comfortable. Nice. I started, since I didn't have much experience in the acting, I started um, paying my dues by being background. Sure. I was core police. Then PD promoted me to stand in for LeSess. Nice. And it was only right to book PD. And it was comfortable because I knew everyone around me. So that was my experience. At- that's a, that's a, going on these shows so I, I was on PD not super long ago mm-hmm. and it's 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 an experience like it's it's interesting but obviously you have different experiences right because like you said you know, we start we do background just to get mm-hmm. something um, also what's your opinion on background you think people should do it because I've had I've had people say and preach the opposite say don't do it it's not worth it blah 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 I'm a fan of doing it I'm a fan that's, a, win, that's a Wendy question for uh, me I appreciate PD for what they've done for me they made me core. They promoted me to stand in. I, they taught me a lot of things behind the scenes and in front of this, in front of the camera. So, if you have that experience, I say do it. But if if you don't, then I, I I've always been a fan of it, only because again, you don't see this, right? So, like, if you think about, and even worse now since COVID, right? Because mm-hmm. everything's even more closed mm-hmm. in, right? Less people, blah blah blah. 
you just you, you don't just walk around and see productions right you don't mm-hmm. do that because they kind of keep you away mm-hmm. blah 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 you don't really see what's going on you can't get close if you want to know what that's like there is only really one way to get there and it's to be you know be background first so you can see it so you can see what the cameras look like you can see what the people look like you can look at your actors because you'll see them walking around blah blah, blah. you can't talk to them but mm-hmm. what the process yeah you, you see, see you process. see everything because you never see behind the scenes especially back in the day now you can see it online but when we were kids you couldn't see no. it. there was nothing yeah. there was nothing you know um, I, I definitely am uh, in favor of that. That really yeah. exposed me to what that was and mm-hmm. if I wanted to do that. You know what I'm saying? And then obviously, you know, you take your classes, get better, get your agent, start working to get into yes. it and get, book it. But when you're cast, it's crazy because it's like a, such a, it's such a different experience because when you're background, they keep you kind of separate from everybody. You know, you don't talk to the actors, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. But when you're cast, it's like you can talk to whoever you want. Yeah. You can walk around wherever the fuck you want to go. You know, that was such a fun experience. Yeah. Like to be able to talk to Patrick and Jesse and Marina and all those people, it's like like you almost starstruck, but you you gotta kind of kind of keep it in, you know, because you don't want to like your coworkers, not your colleagues. It's crazy. I tell people that all the time. I'm like, oh, I'm I'm part of the union, so that means me and Robert Downey Jr. are coworkers. Yeah, (laughs) you are. You are. 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 (laughs) Um. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a crazy thing. It's a crazy world. Just don't. I, I just hope they don't expect that they're going to get discovered. Because I I've I've met some few people that have started background and think that they're going to discover me. They try to get into the camera. They try to do their own thing. And well, you know what? That that's an interesting. That's interesting. I mean, I, I think a lot of people have that idea. Mm-hmm. You know, I've run into people with podcasts that have that idea. Mm-hmm. Like they'll start a podcast and they think tomorrow because they're popular amongst their friends. I'm on YouTube. Yeah, I'm, gonna be a star. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a hundred thousand subscribers next week. Yeah, that's not how it works. Right. You know what I'm saying? You might be popular amongst your friends, but this is a worldwide thing. And I, I agree with you. You definitely don't don't call attention to yourself when you're when you're in your background. That's not your job. Right. We all have a job. Your job is to be a background at the time. That's, that's what you do. And learn. Your job. Yes. Watch and learn. Open your eyes and learn. Absolutely. Um, any experiences that stand out when you guys were recording? When we were re- like something, anything, anything that happened, maybe uh, somebody fell or something funny or anything like that, or, or a moment I, that was like really, really impactful for you. I think, that I, I, think um, I don't know about uh, on set, but I can tell you about one, one thing uh, that happened during an audition. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Claire Simon, obviously you've been in, cl- in front of Claire Simon, you know, um, I was going up for a gangbanger row and I'm this tough ass guy. I'm ready to go. I sit down in the chair. That was my choice. And I crossed my fucking legs. <laughs> gangbangers crossed their legs. I swear, <laughs> man, it was just as, it, you know, it, it, I crossed my legs and Claire looked at me and I looked at her and she's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Please don't cross your legs. Though, so. No, I mean, I can, it, I can it was imagine. great, man. It was it was. It is as stupid as that might sound, it was great for me, you know. And mm. then she called me back three times after that, awesome. you know. Yeah, but you I, left an impression. Yeah, you left yeah. an impression. Yeah, that's the guy who crossed his fucking. <laughs> 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 hey, great but, impression. Hey, I'll tell you what, if it freaking helps you get more, no nah, man, it bust, did. Yeah, man, I, it. it did, man, because she gave me three other auditions, and I ended up booking uh, a. A really big role on Chicago Fire, man. So it was nice. pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. I mean, see, was that this last? That wasn't this last. That was, season, was no, it? no, that was two. I'm eligible now, so that was two. Oh, yeah, seasons. That sucks. Yeah, that yeah. does suck. Mm-hmm. You're on PD and you can't be on for two years or Dude, any, any, any of, of the Chicago any shows. Any of the Chicago no. One shows. That's kind of crazy. So, hey, Chicago oh, One, not? I'm available now. Just to let you know, <laughs> Give this man my a two call. years are over. <laughs> Give, Give this <laughs> man a call. <laughs> um, Wendy, any experiences for you? Anything funny? Anything that you can remember? The only thing I remember was um, the day after we shut down for COVID. What because happened? If like fifty percent of the crew had COVID. Wow! Oh, because you were on Jeez. you were on PD. Oh, okay. right before I, get, I, get I shut it. down. I so that it. was like that was. I was scared. I could admit I was scared. That part that. Mm. It, for me, it's scary. This whole situation with COVID. Of course. So for me, of I was kind of scared that. COVID kind of changed everything. It did. It sucks. You know? It did. Um, I will say one thing, though. I do like that it's more um, self-tapes. 
I do like that. You like the yeah. self-tape. I'll tell you why I like the self-tape. Mm. Because it gives you more... Now, mind you, again, unless you're someone who, who uses the adrenaline to kind of yeah. go through the audition, which I, I, I'm i pretty sure there's people out there that do that. But self-tapes help you because you can do it as many times as you want. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to... You can send the best one versus when you go in person. You know, you go in there. Okay, ready? One and done. Go. Maybe. Maybe one and done. Because sometimes you'll get two chances. <clears throat> but... Is I feel like there's so much more pressure. Excuse me. <clears throat> I feel like there's so much more pressure live when you're in an audition room mm-hmm. with people than when you're in front of a camera. Because in front of my camera, I'm with this. I'm with this dude. Yeah. So me and him are just going back. You know, <coughs> do it again. Do it. He's, it's fine. No, it's not fine. We got to do it again. And whatever. <laughs> you got all this time to do it and kind of prep at your own time. When, I mean, mind you, I was on the tail end of of going to auditions because I started not too long ago. So right when COVID hit, obviously. Yeah. I don't really have too many times where I went to Claire or whatever. Um, but that pressure is different. Yeah. You know, it's not the same. But I, I do kind of want to do it because I kind of, you know, Enjoy the rush. Yeah, that yeah. rush. You know, you kind of want to have it. Yeah, it is two lines, three hours doing Shut two, up. three lines. Shut up. It's never that bad. Shut up. It's <laughs> never <laughs> that bad. In school detention. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I could not say in school you can, detention you can say, saved my you life. Can put three I words together. Detention. I couldn't say, I kept saying in school suspension. <laughs> because that's what that's what I used to get when I was in school yeah. in school suspension you know it just didn't make sense to that you wonder why you're always cast as a gangbanger I feel comfortable doing the self tapes I feel like it's, yeah. it's I less pressure I feel like it's a little less pressure I hate it I don't I know if that's a, okay, why, why do you hate I, it I hate it because Ooh, sorry. It, I, I never I don't like the way I look on camera I don't like I, I don't like the way I sound it, I just it's the same as watching something that you just filmed. He's not gonna watch this episode. No, 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 no. Is the camera right there? You look no. good. You look good. You no, look no, good. but that's good. not it no, it's not, I prefer that I am a pressure guy. I prefer the pressure. I don't don't give me an that opportunity. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I'd rather that. not have that opportunity to just keep taping yeah. because I'm never gonna find the right one. I can see that. I'm sure, I'm sure your friends appreciate that, too. Because <laughs> they're the ones that are helping you self-tape. I'm like, my Jonathan. My son. I that's the poor dude. It's oh, my yeah. son. Yeah, dude. He's like, fuck, dad. Come so, on, man. Let's go. <laughs> it's, it's all right. I don't know. I've always felt like it kind of helps. Just because, again, you can you can give, you can kind of be sure to give the best that, you, that, you, yeah. that you've done. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, it did make it kind of interesting. I mean, because, like, again, you're doing it yourself. So, like. You know, I, I have the benefit of obviously having my podcast, so I have a lot of equipment. But like, also, like, it, it, it kind of has to be challenging because like you're recording on cell phones or whatever. Like, I, I mean, have you guys ever run into a problem where you're like, "crap, it didn't record it," or "crap, I lost the file," or blah blah blah? Because I run into that problem with this podcast, and that drives me crazy. Hey, crap, I can't find a reader because oh I God. live alone. That too. So I have to find someone and have them. Digitally, I've for been me. lucky enough to have that fine gentleman over Aww. there um, across the table from me to help me out for at least most of my most of my career so far. I hate even saying it as a career; yeah. it just sounds so yeah. weird for me. How to do say. I do as a reader? Not, Horrible, not good, right? Yeah, Sorry you know what it is. You ever tell them like <laughs> you, you gotta say it, but you can't say it so loud. Like you're not the actor. I <laughs> if you mess up, keep on going. Oh my oh. god! Do you ever run into that with your, with your son? What's that? Or or what's your reader like? They'll read something, whatever it may be. Yeah. And they mess up a, a line or whatever and they stop. And, and that annoys take. the shit out of me because I'm like, and it's a good take. I'm like, just keep fucking going. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they don't care about if you mess up. All they, they're they looking at me. Mm. But the thing is, there'll be some takes where I feel like, man, this is, this is a good one. Like, you know, when you're saying something, yeah. you know if you got it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and this one time this dude, he messes up a line and he gets very uh, uh, emotional. Not I want to say emotional. Not he emotional. gets very... Uh, animated right so he just gets mad and he just starts punching himself and I'm like dude relax it's not that serious like come on man punch yourself a yeah, yeah, punch yourself bro but I mean, he's a professional reader yeah I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I should make a business of that right. um, so what, what do you do when you don't have a reader what do you what, do you, what are your tactics I don't have any because you have to have a reader in order to audition so I, luckily for me I've been blessed with such a good friend who Felicia. Jen, actually. Jen. <laughs> Jen. So, but if you don't have a reader, you can't audition from yes. what I understood from the agents. 
That's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. I, I've seen some crazy stuff though. Can't have like Siri talk back to you. Well, no, no, I've seen people do like that, that, and that looks weird. Really? That's a joke. That. Oh, really? I've seen people record themselves, mm-hmm. right, and then play it back while they're auditioning. I'm like, that's kind of weird. Mm. Like it doesn't do work. I mean, it it's doesn't. not the same thing because it's not like a real person. Mm-hmm. It's like when you practice. I mean, some people you know practice in their own ways, but I've given it a shot where <clears throat> I'll record my lines, and then while I'm at work, I have it in my headphones. And I'm listening. I'm giving the response, right? But it's me. But it just, even that feels kind of weird because I can't naturally react because sometimes I'm not feeling the same way. Mm. You know, like if it's a sad moment, you know, some I mean, maybe I want to take a second longer. You can't do that when you're rec- pre-recorded right. because it's pre-recorded, yeah. right? You have to be on time every time yeah. versus if it's him really there or you really there, mm. you can react according to how I react. So if I take a second, like you tell me, oh, you're, your your wife is dead. You know not to say. Are you smiling, man? The happiest moment. Let's go drinking right now. Um, I've been waiting for you to tell me that for fucking years. Trying to kill the bitch. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. Damn. I'm kidding. I know that was I'm kidding. Wrong. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but you know what I'm saying? It's different when yeah. it's someone there. Like I, I feel like it's tough. Yeah, it's very tough. So it's you don't have. So you said you you always have one, right? And then I, you, you yeah, struggle with it. I, I mean, I have. So if my son's not there, I have you know some local people that I'll call. I've paid people. You know what I mean? It's, it's, when you're in don't a give, don't give Jonathan that idea. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you pay people. I do. <laughs> He's going to start fucking charging me. No, seriously, if I, if I can't find someone, there's one specific person that I always call. And, and it's, you know, I mean, favors are favors, but I, I don't, I'd rather pay somebody um, because it's serious to me. You know what I mean? And, and it's not a, you know, it's cool to have favors, but I, even my son, dude, I, 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 I want it, I want it to be taken serious. You know, it's serious to me. I want for them to realize it's also should be serious for them. So here's money. Right. Cause you are, you are, you are going to, no, I'm not going to give you money. Look at me. Nope. Yeah. Oh, sorry. (laughs) I don't pay everybody, man. I'm just saying, you know, if it comes down, you know, I I would, it makes a lot of sense because again, auditions is you giving the best of what you got. Right. And it's different when someone's not an actor, an actress, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, when they are actors or actresses, they, they look at it differently. Mm. You know, again, it comes down to reaction because acting is reacting. Right? Right. That's yeah. like the most important thing is sometimes the most important actor in the scene is the person that's not talking. You know, you see their reaction. So, like, again, having the situation where pauses or time or beats or whatever, those can fluctuate, you know. And when you have another actor helping you read it becomes easier, becomes more comfortable, becomes better. Yeah. Versus someone who's not into it or someone who just, all right, hurry up. Like, oh my God, whenever I have ones with my, that my sister has to help me with, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I wouldn't even call her. I mean, I, 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 love, I love that she helps me out sometimes. Oh, uh, I don't know. Because sometimes like, I can't, I mean, John, I love the John, here's another thing about moving here was a benefit because when I do my auditions, when I do my auditions, I do them here now. So John lives here. Mm. He has kids, which I understand. So like he used to go to my house a lot to go help me with auditions. So I'm like, well, this helps him out because he has to be home, right? <laughs> he has to be home. I can always leave my He's house. Got I, no kids. Life. I don't have no kids, no nothing. <laughs> so I can leave my house whenever I want. But um, I've been pretty fortunate. Um, again, I I, I wish I I Wendy, we're gonna be friends because I feel like you can help me with auditions. Yeah, you can help me with auditions. We can we can help each other out. Oh, she lives right down the street. I That's, live like literally. You guys right definitely the should be. There, there I, I also feel like you can help him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you want to get paid, don't you? Five dollars a word, yeah. Five dollars a word. A word. Get the out of here, man. I'm, Are you serious? I'm already, uh, I'm already experienced. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've done like twelve with you. Got a resume. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> speaking of COVID, let's go a little bit off topic. Oh, COVID. You want to talk about COVID? Go ahead. Let's talk. Two seconds. I have a okay. tissue in my hand because of COVID. Oh, you, you oh were, shit. No, man. No, it's the freaking, it's the care. masks, I man. They, they've care. destroyed me. Like this whole nasal thing. Oh my God. Terrible, I, saw, I saw somebody at the mall today with a, a plastic mask that was like from their, not like their nose, like down to like their chin. Mm. Right. And I was like, 
All you could see on the inside was like the humidity and the uh, dripping. Yeah. I'm like, oh the condensation. God, yeah, the condensation. I'm like, that's of gross. their hot breath on there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. obviously, everyone it happens to everyone, right? But when you yeah. have a mask, obviously, the mask absorbs some of it. But it was just like it's just running down the mask. It's like <laughs> almost dripping. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm like, this is like. That's gross. Like, yeah, that's really come gross. on, man. Like, Created that's too much. Little atmosphere. Yeah, like he's got that's, a freaking bacteria yeah. growing up in there in the whole nine yards. Um, so obviously I'm assuming you're 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 tired of the whole COVID um, thing. Way over it. So what's your position on the on the whole My position on what? Like let's say mask or not mask, let's just say that. Let's mask, mask, mask or no mask. mask. Right. Um, so what's your position? And you can be completely honest. Oh, yeah. There's no, there's no. You already heard the man say they it's fucking up his breathing. That's yeah, true. Yeah, it's fucked. No, but so I, you know, I, I don't live in Chicago, Chicago, right? So this will, this will put it to you perfectly. I went to Golden Nugget to go have, I was by myself, Golden Nugget, the, I don't know, like four or five days ago. And I just wanted to go. I was going to sit at the bar. They have, you know, like a little bar area. Sure, I have a little breakfast. It's me by myself. I walk in the door. The lady asks me for my vaccine card. Okay, uh-huh. fine. Then she, I didn't have a mask on. It was literally two steps to get to that bar area. And she's like, sir, I need you to put on your mask to walk over there. I'm like, I was so, so fucking angry. <laughs> I, I was so angry. He just turned I, Italian. He went like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, I was it so angry. Sense. It, it, it was just like, everyone's, you know, no one has a mask on. It, 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 we were talking about I'm that so when we, went, it, we went to Denny's. You were saying that. I'm you were so like, what's the it. difference between walking from the door to Nothing. a table? Yeah, same thing. And then you have 20 Nothing. people that don't have masks. Nothing. You Nothing. Know? They're breathing into the air, aren't yeah, they? Or, I mean, I mean, are they holding their breath? I mean, I'm not sure, but. I think I think we've gotten to a point where yeah. we kind of know more. We know enough that it's not necessarily going to kill you, per se. People can't die from it. I mean, I, I would never cover that. Because I think if you have underlying conditions and blah, 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 that, that's a little more threatening for you. But I think we've learned enough where, like, the majority of the population isn't really going to suffer. From, I mean, you'll suffer from it. John was, was he was, a uh, he had COVID for a while. He was pretty down for the count over there. Yeah, for a little bit. It's not the worst I've ever felt in my life. But You look like <sighs> shit. You did. You looked oh, really, I did. really bad. I thought you meant right now. But like, damn, never the last, fucked you up. got better. No, I mean, that too. I got um, <laughs> You know, I think we've gotten to a point where, like, do we really need them at this point? You know what I'm saying? I don't. I, it's it's hard. I don't think. How so, do you How do you feel, Wendy? I don't know. Um, I've never. I haven't watched the stats lately, but if they're high, I do think I have to say yes. And that's, and that's okay. Fair. That's but fair. for me, yeah. I I have parents who are 80s, and I'd wear it for my neighbors, for my parents, for yeah. my friends. I think that I think the issue with me is more like when when the government kind of steps in. And that's what a lot of things like same thing with the with vaccine um, mandates like that, that to me to me. I'm like, do I think vaccines work? Sure. Do I think they help? Of course. Um, do I think the government should tell you you need to do this or you're going to lose your job? That's kind of where I draw my line. You know what I'm saying? I think the government can can. Se pasaron. Yeah, se pasaron. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like they can recommend. Yeah, that's OK. And, and here's I, I even go a little deeper than that. So, like, I'll say if the employer wants to recommend what wants to make it a uh what's the word mandatory yeah so like if the if the if let's say you work for sony Mm -hmm. yeah you work for sony and sony says tomorrow okay starting next week everyone that works here needs to be vaccinated as a requirement for medical right Mm -hmm. i think they're that's i think that's fine because that's their company they can choose how they want to run their company right that's up to them the same way they can choose the same way they can choose for you to you have to wear a helmet or you have to wear steel toe shoes or whatever. To me, that's no difference. I'm okay with that. I have an issue with the government. If the government says, well, anyone, any company under over a thousand employees or a hundred or whatever it is, hundred employees needs to require this. Yeah. You're forcing companies to do stuff and then they're forcing people to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Like to me, that's kind of where it went kind of crazy. Yeah. You know? It kind of affects the productivity in a company. It does a lot. I mean, it, okay, cops are quitting. Some firemen were quitting. Truckers are blocking roads in Canada. That's insane. That's kind of that's yeah, crazy. That's, that's kind of crazy. crazy. That's kind of crazy. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of split. I'm in the middle with those situations. I'm in the middle with a lot of situations. 
You know, and I think we were talking before. You have a talk show. You have to be in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, mean, I can have my point. I can have my point. I can have, 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 have my point. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing, and this is what we were talking about beforehand. I think this is where the issue lies with people nowadays. And it's and I don't want to say it's 100% the younger mindset, but a lot of it has to do with the younger mindset. Um, We draw this line, right? And you're either on one side or the other. And if you are not on my side, then you are the bad person. Like, and I don't think that's fair for anyone to necessarily say in a lot of cases, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, um, you're either a Republican Democrat or you're, uh, you're Christian or not Christian or whatever, but there's always this line. I'm like, why do we have this line? Why can't no one just, why can't we have a con- And this is why this whole concept started, right? This whole podcast thing was for people who had conflicting ideas to sit down and have a conversation without going to blows for it. And then we can leave and still have a beer. Right. right. That's how it should be. You know? I think it was like that once upon a time where people had respect for other people's opinions. Like, okay, I don't see it that way. <clears throat> I respectfully disagree. Sure. And you move on. Oh, that phrase doesn't uh, fly anymore. No, it doesn't. And, and, I and, respect and it should. Disagree. And it should. And mm-hmm. the crazy part is we don't make progression unless we listen. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I can have my opinion. But the only way, the, okay, let's just say I have an opinion on something. And I, let's just say I'm wrong. Let's just say I'm wrong. How would I get away from that? Or how would I ever learn any better if I don't listen? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Totally. That's how we make progress. How we learn yeah. from each other. Making concessions too. Like you want something, I want something. There's no meeting in the middle. No, it's either everything that I want or nothing. Right. And look That's how the how city's turning out right now. Chicago, Chicago's kind of fucked Shit up right storm. now. storm. I it? mean, Next to Detroit. violence everywhere. I mean I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you don't live in the city. I don't you're, live in the city in, anymore. In, I grew up out here, but not not now. Where I you're got at married there? and live out by Great that America. That's the smartest thing you ever did. <laughs> Gurney. That's, Gurney, uh, baby. Gurney. <clears throat> Good old Gurney. Yeah. Like, did anybody hear about the, 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 the lady, that lady cop? She just got two years for, uh, for that... Uh, when she accidentally grabbed the wrong gun. Oh, taser? the taser. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, It's interesting about that story because people were really mad about it. And I'm like, okay, two years. Heck, that was that light? Sure, it was light. But here's the thing. Do I think she purposely killed that person? I don't think she purposely killed that person. I think she honestly made a mistake. But it's funny because people react so aggressively, right? They're like, no, this was a, this, is an, this is an injustice, blah, 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 blah. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to kill her? Do you want to electrocute her? Put her on a chair because she made a mistake? Are we a la- aren't we the land of opportunities? Like opportunities? Oh, no, like no, no, I mean, she, it's not again. She didn't do it on purpose. I don't. I don't believe she put it on, did it on purpose. That's a lot of evidence that you know she looked like she was batshit scared when it happened. I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I don't like, remember too much, but I do remember like a short video and seeing her. She did look yeah, scared. Was I have no idea. I remember like she she shot it, and then like afterwards, the kid, she's like, "Oh my!" God. Oh, I thought I, it was I the shot taser. I, I shot or whatever, and I'm like, "Okay, you can honestly see that it wasn't like an intentional act." Mm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but it, it, it was light though for me. I would have said like for you because like you're taking somebody's life away. There's no going back from that. Mm-hmm. Sure, Even she, if it was a mistake. But remember, her life her life is never going to be the same after that. I know. But you're also a professional police officer. You should be able to distinguish that's, that's, a taser yeah. from a gun. Sure. And that's what I was going to say. I mean, who, who's and I believe, the real she was, one? I believe also she was a trainer. Yeah, she was I, a I trainer think, as I, well. I think, yeah, yeah she, I think she, was one of those, she was one of those. like that, Teachers. That, Again, but we have yeah. to put in the situation. This is that's when I. Crazy. This is when people. Well, don't that's really why you got to know who you are. If you're not cut out for something, you got to decipher that for yourself. Sure, I agree. I agree. But we yeah, also got to remember that, like, this is when people say, um, you know, cops. Like, do we really hold cops to a higher level, higher standard? Yes, but understand that they are also human beings. Human beings are not perfect. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like situations like this will happen. This is there's never going to be a day where mistakes will never be made. That's just 100 percent. Yes. Training. Training is 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 important. But there's a difference. Like when you you know, training is training, but being in a moment are, are two different things. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And every moment is different. How do we get on this? I'm sorry. I don't know. This got very serious. It went from COVID to to killing a cop or <laughs> killing or no, a kid or whatever. I'm sorry. I apologize. What do you guys do for fun? Yes, Come let's on. switch it up. Yeah. What do you do for fun, Wendy? 
God damn, John. No, no <laughs> action. No action. <laughs> um, alongside <clears throat> acting, yes, I started to learn how to punch needle. I have no idea what how that to is. do punch what punch needle. What the hell's punch it's needle? It's like you take yarn and a little punch needle and you make a design with yarn. Oh, that's cool. It's relaxing and that it helps me relaxing. escape. It's like a manual NFT. Right? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe one day it'll be worth thousands upon thousands of dollars like exactly. digital art. Make sure you reason. sign it. That's my COVID yes, hobby. You know. See, well, yeah, that, that's the one thing I think about that COVID was good about. It gave us something different to, to do because mm-hmm. like we did this you're knitting, yeah. not knitting. You're, you're, COVID, what, um, what is it called punch needling punch needling, punch needling. <laughs> that's it we learned something new today right that punch, needle. punch needling yourself Indica, what do you do for fun uh, i work out man that's you're, it i'm telling you as soon as i walked in i saw him i'm like let's go to the fucking it's the brotherhood right there. <laughs> I did. I was like, when, you hungry, you say this right? Are you hungry? I'm hungry with donuts. <laughs> Man. I, mean, I used to go to the gym. Yeah, he'd say the same thing. Yeah, let's go to the gym. And then he'd end up in a basketball court That's somewhere. That was my uh, biggest yeah, thing. That was my that. biggest thing. Because like, the gym that, we go, that most of us go to has a basketball court. So it's too distracting. <laughs> you know, like I want to play basketball. I've played basketball. I got broken fingers because of basketball. I yeah. love that stupid game, man. It's really? a great game. <laughs> you like watching it, or you watch it more? Uh, I don't like today's basketball Sorry. at all. What's wrong Sorry. with today's basketball? Uh, a bunch of selfish, self-centered, uh, non-wanting to pass the ball. People who just want to be number one and don't care about the team. If you look at a team, so you look at you even look at uh, like a Golden State Warriors. They play like a team, man. You know, that's like old school bat. That's that. Look who's coaching. Dude, I'm 50 years old. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You know what I mean? That there's a difference. Mm. And and today, dude, and I don't care. You know, people could say whatever they want about LeBron. I can't stand the dude. I can't stand his game. Maybe he's a great person. You know, I'm not talking about his person. I'm talking about his game. I I just, I, 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 LeBron. Okay. So I I, I will say one thing because I'm, I'm not a big LeBron fan either. No. But I cannot cover up what he's done. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, I I do think he's one of the greatest basketball players that ever played. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of him, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan because of the compare. Like, even when Rafi came a couple weeks ago, he he goes, what sucks is the comparison to Michael Jordan. Okay, he's not. Michael. You're not. He's not Michael Jordan. He's not. Um, They play completely different. Yeah. You know, and part of me, I'm kind of biased because I grew up watching Jordan. I grew up watching Kobe Bryant. And like Kobe Bryant to me is the last the very last player that played that way. No. You know, so when I watch LeBron and I see LeBron, when your team needs two points. And again, I understand that, you know, being ball hungry and whatever, but you are the player. Mm-hmm. You are what we call the unstoppable player. Correct. What does unstoppable mean? That means you, you can't be stopped. Right. That means mm-hmm. you should be able to score it. Right. So how are you with 10 seconds down to and you pass the ball? To someone else, scared of the moment, like that. Even though, even though it, it might be, it might be the right basketball play. But we're talking about you, not the actual play. You get what I'm saying? Like Michael Jordan, he ain't passing that shit. And he, although he did <clears throat> pass it to Paxson, he did pass it to uh, sure, sure, Kerr. Kerr you know, it's got sure. me. You know, but you can tell the intention that Michael Jordan yeah. had in every play that he had. Kobe Bryant was the same way, and I think Kobe Bryant said it when he was young. He's like, you know, he's like, it's like Babe Ruth. I mean, you. You swing big, you miss big. Sometimes you hit a home run, sometimes you don't. But the fact that you knew, you knew Kobe Bryant was that killer. You knew Michael Jordan was that killer. Mm-hmm. LeBron? I don't know. I don't know. You know? He contracts his shit out to some mercenary. <laughs> He's not the actual killer. <laughs> yeah. Who's your favorite basketball player of all time? Of all time? Oh, cool. I mean, besides Mike. Let's just, besides I, feel, Mike? I, feel like, I feel like Michael Jordan's on everybody's um, list. Besides Mike. Fuck, man. I like, uh, what's the dude with the glasses? Los Angeles Lakers, Kurt Kareem. Rambis, man. Oh, Kurt Rambis? Fucking Kurt oh, yeah, Rambis, man. Old. I love Kurt Rambis. <laughs> you I mean, know, those, 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 those were Yeah, those like were those years where everything, yeah. it wasn't basketball, it was a fight. No, nah, man, it was great. But see, that's what you want on your squad. You know what I mean? That I, I take, yeah, I Kurt, and, and I know it's a weird name. It is weird. I, but he's he a tough baller. A bitch, he, he's yeah. a tough fucking guy. Yeah, but look cool. at the difference, right? In eras. Yeah. Like how basketball yeah. was played back then. Oh, they're compared a bunch to of now. fucking wimps, man. I mean, now. Today. Oh, my. 
They're wimps, believe me, Wendy. Wimps. I have no idea who the people are. You, you watch Wendy, basketball. Who's your favorite your basketball, basketball player? Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr is your favorite Kerr. basketball player. That's not a bad pick. Yes. That's not a bad pick. He's a uh, he's a what three three time champion? Yeah. No, well, with the as a player, he's won like three times. Three with the no, Bulls. Four because he won with San Antonio. With the, yeah. He won with San Antonio, so he's got like four. Plus, he's got three with Golden State. Yeah, that's seven. That's Look a lot of rings for that man. I chose wisely. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> Good job. Um, <laughs> so you're you're a gym guy too, huh? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> like oh, like for always, like since you were little, or recently? Uh, yeah, I've always been. Are you like an everyday workout guy? Uh, five, six days a week. God, you guys have so much. Five, six days a week. I'll have you over there. <laughs> I got a couple guys that like run a that run a gym. That are gonna come on the pod, and that's like gonna be his favorite episode. Yeah, like, sure. this, this is gonna be the opposite. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna mute myself. <laughs> what protein drink do you prefer? <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of that going on. Serious mass? Stuff. I don't know. A lot of chest creatine. Body. I don't know. I, don't take, I stopped taking pre workout. I stopped all that shit, man. John, you still I take pre workout? Getting heart palpitations? Uh, I had, ner- uh, just, nerve? Yeah, yeah. I can't. Too much? I can't, man. It's too much for me. Me? Uh, that's bad for you, by the way. Not a lot. I'm, no, 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 I'm not a lot. Uh, black coffee. Give me a cup of black That's coffee. That's what I've been I'm drinking. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give you something that happened to me. Now, mind you, I probably would have had this problem regardless, but um, a long time ago, I, I I went to I went to, I had a basketball game, and I when I was on my way home, I randomly like passed out. Mm. Um, when I went to the doctor a couple of days later, they figured out I have a heart condition, and um, the funny thing was, the guy the doctor comes in because you know how they take your urine and all that stuff your blood work and all that. And the doctor comes in, he goes, what have you been, what are you, what are you eating or taking? And I'm like, oh, nothing really. He's like, do you work, do you go to the gym? I think I was working out at the time. And I'm like, I mean, I take C4. And he goes, does that stuff have this, 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 this? I'm like, it probably does. He goes, that's bad for you, man. Tetraline. It's, all it's a lot stuff, of yeah. stuff. It's a lot of stuff a lot in your of body. Stimulants in there. Yeah, yeah, and he's like that. That could have helped. I mean, I'm not. He's not saying that that's what caused it, but like the fact that like a doctor found that in my body, mm-hmm. like, and it was still there because I don't think I think I had I hadn't taken a pre work in like a couple of days, and I'm like, damn, that kind of spooked me. Mm-hmm. Like since then, I'm like, oh, you know, what? I don't want to take this stuff because it's like it doesn't go out of you. It doesn't get out of your body. You know, it's crazy. But it'll still drink a a, a gallon of. Uh, Cherry, Cherry Coke. Coke. Oh yes. Oh Every yes. Cherry Coke. That I will. That's my. Healthy. That's my. That's, my, that's okay. definitely. That's the greatest. Cherries. That's my freaking. Yeah. Fruit. That's my weakness. Fruit. That's my weakness, yeah. man. That's fruit. That's fruit. Yeah. That's my freaking weakness. We all have weaknesses, man. Oh yeah. Okay. No. Wendy, what's your weakness? Chocolate. What do you enjoy? Chocolate. Chocolate. What kind of chocolate? My favorite, like, go to is the uh, Ferrero Rocher's. Oh really? Yeah. Rocher. You know my, my mom's big on those. That's I like, love that's like those. my secret weapon. Whenever it's her birthday, sometimes you get her a bunch of those. <laughs> it's she's like happy. go to. She's totally happy with those. You ever know what those are? The circle ones with the hazelnut. With the golden wrapper. Oh, with the golden I wrapper. I love those. You love it. I oh. love those. What's your What's your weakness? What do you enjoy that's oh, not man. That's not good for you? Uh, ice cream, Haagen Dazs, chocolate, just straight up chocolate ice cream is so fucking good. Oh. So good, man. John, what's we your finally weakness? disagree. I'm Everything? a vanilla guy. Um, oh, did you say vanilla yeah. guy? Yeah. Oh, get the chocolate vanilla box. Yeah, they come right. together. Get the Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Napoleon. Napoleon. <laughs> no, 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 is it no? Every Latino birthday no, party. No, Napoleon. Napoleon. It's Napoleon. It's Napoleon. Wait, what Something is it? Like, it's not Napoleon. It's not Napoleon. No, no, no. Is it Neapolitan. Neapolitan. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, Neapolitan. You say Napoleon. I said Napoleon. I don't know. That's what I thought of it when I was a kid. I haven't had that type of ice cream in a long time. Like Great, you said, it's man, always I in like it. birthday parties or whatever because it's like all three of them. I love it. And I would just kill the chocolate. I don't like the chocolate. Everything else is still fucking there. John, what's your weakness, bro? Oh, you know what it is. Mama Luna pizza? Yeah, it's pizza. Oh, pizza. Who? Mama Luna pizza. It has Maybe. to be Mama Luna pizza. Mama, Mama Luna. Luna pizza. If I was able to take out every slice of pizza I've ever eaten out of my like Body, mm-hmm. I'd be ripped right now. <laughs> like fucking six pack and everything. And I think that's, that, that's always been your, your your weakness, and it's not so much. Okay, so like me and him, we grew up together, so like I I know a lot about this. Um, I don't even think it's so much what we. Yes, it, let me rephrase that. It's it is what we eat, mm-hmm. but I think we eat a lot of it. Like I've noticed now in my life is like, and this, mind you, we were just talking about this is a Hispanic thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they feed us 
way too much. Way too much. Sometimes then, forced. Dude, yeah. A, well, that's what we were saying. A la fuerza. Like, literally, <laughs> oh, yeah. you cannot turn, you can't turn down food. No, no, no. no. You know? In, in, you hungry? In, no, no, no tengo hambre, mami. I mean, when they... ¿Tú quieres comer? Right? Yeah, how many times are they going to ask you? Oh, yeah. I said no already. Yeah. Tú, tú, tú quieres comer, toma. Yeah. Come, comete eso. ¿Quieres más? <laughs> bro. <laughs> like, not, uh, not even done with the first one. No, yeah. you're not even done. Yeah. Let me give you some more, bro. It, it's messed up when, when, when you pick up the plate and the plate is like weighing your hand down like you actually have to use a muscle a lot of muscle to hold the plate right. yeah holy fucking shit like that's a lot but i mean again i think me and him our problem has always been like we eat a lot you know like when we go out to eat like we went out to eat we usually go out to eat after after the podcast or whatever and you know i'll eat a good amount this man orders like two two or three things off the menu or whatever and i think that's our problem we don't know how to you know Stop. No, my stomach expands. I'm like an anaconda. I could swallow something like the size of my own body. Gosh. <laughs> and it's messed up because I used to, I mean, I, I'm still relatively thin. I'm not whatever, but like when I was younger, we would eat the way we eat and I would probably lose weight. Mm. But it's crazy because as you get older, you know, everything kind of slows down and you start to see the scale go up and then it's harder to make it go the opposite way. True. You know, you ever have trouble uh, with weight? You've always yes. been a pretty fit guy. No, man. I, I was, uh, I have pictures where you could have rolled me down the street. That's how I grew up. You yeah. know? Yeah. I swear and to God, then, Michael, I have a theory. It's, it's people like him, people like me. I was fat when I was younger. Yeah. Those are the people that stick with it like the rest of their lives. Yeah. Because they it have really like is. a motivation for yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they have that thing where I, I wanted, to, I wanted to lose weight. So you, you we are like, yeah. we don't want to go back to, to, yeah, where we started. I, I just feel it doesn't feel good to me no, anymore. No, no. It, Especially it really five, doesn't. six days a week. Like, I it don't go two or three days to the gym, and I will feel like shit. Yeah. I didn't work. Today was my day off. I, I, no. It's just not, not fun. Work. Yeah. It's not fun. Work out or go to a podcast. Damn, that's a hard decision. <laughs> no, 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 like I took today, like today's my day, like my recover day. Oh, okay. okay. You know, and even during my recover day, I'm like fucking like a crackhead. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously. So do you work out at home or you go to a gym? I have a gym at home and then I have a personal trainer that, that I go with a guy named Rob Brown. Um, so you got good though. You got it nice because I think my biggest problem with the gym mm. has always been I hate how packed gyms are. Like there was a time, there was a time back in the day um, where I thought I was in pretty good shape. I don't know if John would agree, but I was in decent he shape. He got for, to bench in 225. Sure, whatever, for a skinny decent. guy. Um, I found a good time frame for me, right? So like I would work till like midnight. So then I would get out of work, I'd go to the gym and the gym was empty for the most part, mm -hmm. right? But then once I stopped working that third shift or whatever and you start working first, what time do you get out? You get out at five. Gyms are packed to five, yeah. You know, and they're packed with big guys like him, and it's like that's kind of intimidating. Like, you know, I don't, I don't want to go work out with people like There's him. No reason to be intimidated. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it's an intimidation factor, man. It's like if you were to, if, if you walked in when Arnold was was in his prime, you wouldn't be intimidated. No, no I go I'd up be, to I get like, motivated. What up, Arnold? What's up? <laughs> Can I get some of those injections? You're freaking stabbing or something. Come on, let's work out together. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I've always had this like intimidation thing and then like I don't know and then I still like to play basketball and I, and I and I'll tell you what I went to go out work out with the guys who are gonna be here in a couple weeks and dude I was sore as fuck right yeah, that's what happens when you Hold on. but yeah. the crazy part was so then I had to, I still play basketball in leagues right so like I go to play and my game was horrible as well and I'm like I can't do both right now Mm -hmm. Because it, it affects my game too much. It does. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And, with I, that. and I think, and I do think that over time, if you work out enough, obviously you get accustomed to it. Because I did when I was younger. But right now, it's like, okay, so I'm probably the way my work schedule works, and this, and editing, and blah blah blah, and doing all the other stuff. Like I probably get to the gym maybe two or three, maybe two three times a week if I could. So there's that gap. So I'm gonna be sore a lot, and I'm like, geez, am I gonna? I'm gonna have to stop playing basketball. I'm like, I'm not gonna get in shape until I retire from basketball. That's what I'm gonna do. Come on. No, I still like to play basketball. Anyways, um, any projects you guys got coming up? Like, any, any of you guys interested in writing or directing or anything like that? I'll, I'll, I'll let it. No, I got stuff. I think I'm still I'm still working on the um, Killing the Arts New Ties series. That's okay. pretty much it right now. Are you interested in anything else, like directing or writing or? Oh. 
and writing. We're writing another series for Claim the Arts as well. Right on. Right on. That's cool. That's pretty yeah. much it. And yourself, sir. Right now I'm in pre-production for a film that I wrote. I'm directing. Uh, it's called Solo Otro Dia. Okay. Mm. Um, going to Philadelphia to film it. It's a, um, <clears throat> it's a film based um, in the 70s. Uh, so it's going to be pretty cool. It's about a Puerto Rican family. Um, well, uh, What's that? Web oh yeah, it's a, yeah. It's about a Puerto. It's a really good. It's a. It's a heartfelt. Uh, it's a. It's. It's a. It's one of those. You know, it ain't just a really good heartfelt movie. Uh, it's about. It's about a man goes to work. Obviously, you kind of see his. You don't see his day at work. Actually, what you do is you see the family's day while he's at work. You know, and That's then cool. and then. Um, you kind of see the struggles of what's going on, the racism, just the dirtiness, the grunginess of the outside world. And he comes in to his safe haven, you know, which is his family. Right and on. and it's 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 pretty cool, man. That's so, awesome. Yeah. All the, yeah. That's awesome. The yeah, question would be, cool. is it 70s? 70s, yeah. You're going to have an afro? Bell bottoms? Uh, I'm playing my father. I'm, I'm not going to have an afro no. or, or bell bottoms. <laughs> I'm going to look okay. different. I'm actually. That's the, not I'm in my work. I'm in my work out in my work clothes. Yeah, That's I think those old, are yeah. like kind of the coolest movies, like yeah. the ones that go back in time because you got to change the whole like. Series. Dude, I'm so yeah. excited! I mean, like yeah, right now we're we're in pre production. Um, Is it Mary? Mary's my uh, assistant director, but I actually hired a gentleman, um, Matt Campbell, with Mobula Productions. Mm. He's going to uh, mm. produce it, and we're right now like looking for film. Uh, crews and, and camera. Well, cameras we're bringing from here, but film crew and actors. I'm everybody's going to be from Philly, man. I want this to be a Philadelphia um, story. Nice, you know. So you're I mean? gonna you're gonna direct, yeah, and act. I'm only acting as my dad, though. So you, you know, know I'm oh, playing. I'm, I, I was, the way that I wrote it. No, man, it, it's not it's, one scene. I mean, you only have one part. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, no, 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 is no, yours, no. Yours is a major part. Um, it's it's sort of because <laughs> I, I man, like I. I yeah. I don't think I'll ever do that again. That's why I'm bringing Mary with That's me. I'm, bring, so I'm bringing, yeah, and I'm going to give Mary a, a, a shameless plug here, but Mary Q Angel is fucking amazing. I like she, her. She's my, I love her. Um, and actually besides my, my assistant director in this film, she's my friend, but she's also my acting coach. Right on. Uh, so she's so she knows how to get the stuff out of you. Dude, she's, she's fantastic. Dude, That's you, awesome. If you're going to take a class with Mary, you better be prepared. That's awesome. Anybody, and if anybody wants, I'm telling you, look her up. Mary uh, on Instagram is mary.q.angel. You know, she'll choose you. You can't choose her. She will straight up tell you if you ain't ready, don't even come in my class. That's that's cool. That's yeah. cool. The only reason I mentioned this because like, I remember I did, I did a short film, yeah. 15 minutes, and basically I had to do everything in it, right? Besides move the camera because obviously I'm in front of it. Yeah. But like, that's so hard. Like have like trying to piece together a, a story and kind of direct it and kind of be worried about audio and this. I, mm-hmm. but I, I, I trying to never. keep me from laughing. Yes, the that whole was time. <laughs> that no, was sorry, my I'm I, sorry. I can definitely see that, but this is going to be an actual SAG film. So oh, every, right it's everybody. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. I mean, yeah, I'm not. Like I just wrote yeah. one. I just wrote a short that I want to. I want to film again. Some you know personal project. Yeah. Um, but like I, I can't do it. Like I need. I need help this mm-hmm. time because I can't because you can't focus you know because if you're going to act in it mm-hmm. and your mind is worried about a light or a shot or or a microphone or whatever yeah. or audio like you can't focus on what you need to do you know what well, experience you had at Mas o Menos when you <laughs> yeah so we just finished a, a Christmas film actually went, did you see I it saw. Yeah, it was short. It was cool. It was cute. You know what I mean? But it was a fucking headache. Yeah. Was it? it was 21 yeah. people. 21 people? 21 right? people. We had 21 people in that thing. 21 actors. You know, and that was... Uh, uh, what was and uh, my friend was on there. Um, we shot it over the Phoenix. weekend. Oh, oh Phoenix. Phoenix. Love Phoenix. that, dude. Yeah, man. Phoenix, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Jordan. Mm-hmm. Jordan. Yeah. So, so... Um, over a weekend. Yeah, it was in one weekend, dude. It was grueling, but at the end of the day, the experience was awesome, man. And and I think the coolest part was when we were all done. Um, you know, we actually turned it into something cool. We, you know, Wendy, if it wasn't for this one, forget about it. But you know, so we actually turned it into a film, like a film Latino film showcase. Okay. You know, so so it was like it wasn't all about our film. We brought in other. You know, Latino directors and, and story writers uh, so that they can also share their 
uh, experience or not their experience, but their their projects. Right. You know, so it That's was awesome, awesome man. It, it was it was so much fun. The location was beautiful. Yeah, we did it at uh, Claremont Collections, a car collection out here, not too far from here, right? Oh, I I, I saw it. I did see. Yeah. I, you guys had it. Somebody was live streaming about it. Or oh, whatever. Really? I, I, yeah, I saw I saw something. Yeah. That, was, that was really cool. So yeah, yeah it, was really dude, cool. it just went from this film to just it's like it just it blew up. Phew. That's awesome. So great. That's awesome. Yeah. That, you know, that, that's what it's about. You know, you, you you meet people and a lot a lot of good people. You know, Hispanics, obviously, we try to stick together as much as we can, you know, because I feel like we're, we're a little underrepresented as well. Yeah. Um, Puerto Ricans, especially. Yeah. You know, I, I feel I feel a certain way about that. Yeah. Well, because it's like, I mean, if you look at if you look at movies, the majority of movies, um, when you think of a Hispanic mm-hmm. right actor or whatever, most of the time it's a Mexican gangbanger that you see or whatever like Puerto Ricans are weird like I don't know where we fit because I mean we have Jennifer Lopez right she's an actress right but she plays everything and anything yeah. who else who else besides like the few Puerto Ricans that, that we know of that are major actors right now I mean how many can we name John can you oh, name one this guy uh John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo. Yeah. He's, he's not major, but he's not a lister. Yeah, no, he's, he's Puerto Rican. Yeah, but he's he half and half. He's Colum- yeah, he's Colombian Rican. He was great as uh, Luigi as well in Super Mario. No, <laughs> <laughs> no man, Isai Morales is a badass brother, man. Or who's Puerto Rican that, that's really famous? The guy who did the the beer commercials. We were talking about him not so long ago. Um, beer commercial. Ah, oh, crap. What's his name? He's kind of yeah. ugly looking. He's kind of an ugly looking dude. Um, is he older with the beard and with curly uh, hair? No, no, no. I'm talking no, no, no. about the dude. He's God, got a I don't have my phone. John, look, nose. look, I know look, who up, you're look up Puerto Rican about. actors, and I bet you he's like, going to be the first one to pop <laughs> oh, up. Is it Guzman? He's got like, no, a no, frowny uh, face. Uh, Oh my god! I remember he was in the the, the Dostakis commercials yeah, or, or the on tequila my commercial. I follow him on Instagram. I forgot his name. Who the hell are you talking about? Look it up. Yeah. Stop, stop looking at me. And look it up. Um, <laughs> How do you search no, that? They, they <laughs> look up Puerto Rican actors. Yeah, one of the most talk about ones. Puerto Rican. The one, the first one that should pop up there is Raul Julia. That's the one. Oh. That should, that's the first one who should pop up as a as Rican. I, I think. I think we're what just. He's Gomez. Let me tell you, man, that dude, if you want to study some guy, some uh, an act, and that's what I was going when you were talking about, like, that's my guy. He was Bison from, uh, what's his name? I don't care who he played. What's his name? Benicio del Toro. Toro. Oh, Toro. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Tipo. He was in the Dos Equis commercial. Not Dos Equis, though. He's some... That's what threw me off. I was like, he's, he's, one, of one, of those, he's in one of those he's one of those beer commercials or whatever. That he's just like sitting there he's and he's whatever. Tecate? Like, uh, I don't think it was Tecate. Uh, well, uh, uh, whatever. He's one of those. And then that Unusual guy. Suspects? Isn't he in that one? Ah, I, I think, think so. Is. Yeah, I think yeah. he is. I think he is. Um, but anyway, I just always felt like, you know, Puerto Ricans, you know, I don't know where we fit because we're kind of... Uh, you have Joker up there. A Puerto people, Rican it, played the Joker in the the, the, the Adam original, West. Oh, the original, uh, original. Uh, Cesar, Cesar Romero, no? He no. Was, isn't he Puerto Rican? Was Cesar Romero, Puerto and he was a fantastic Fuck, Joker. The one from the old from the old uh, Adam West, the commercial? sixty, the, the, the Adam West, series. right? No, I don't. I don't, I don't know if he's Puerto remember. Rican. I know the big thing with him was that he didn't want to shave his mustache. <laughs> Why? He a Joker. Wants to. He had a thing with he's his mustache. Joker. But then, if you look at him and playing it, it the, his mustache is there. It's just painted oh, over. Yeah. He had a big thing about it. Like they were, you need to shave it. No, I'm not going to shave my shave mustache. Shave your beard, Michael. I will for the right money, for the right amount of money. I think. I think going into that, into the Puerto Rican actor thing, I think the coolest thing right now is that on Power, I play a Puerto Rican. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, I think that that because the family that I'm in is Mexican. And I, Wait, I call. Did they switch that then? Because that was another thing I had a misconception mm-hmm. about. Because obviously, Puerto Rican Spanish and Mexican Spanish are two different things. Mm-hmm. Two different things. And when I was reading the script, mm-hmm. right, the lines that the the abuelita or whoever is talking mm-hmm. in it, mm-hmm. tia, the tia, mm-hmm. she's saying things that we as Puerto Ricans don't normally say. You would hear that from a from a Mexican, Mexican. family, right? And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so am I supposed to like? No. Do I say it like me? Because, you know, our, yeah, our, our español está ta, ta tirado. You know, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, 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 yeah. No, you know, Mexicans th- talk that really nice Spanish. Well, yeah. so no, no, no. I'm no. Colombian. You're Colombian? <laughs> <laughs> How's your Spanish? Are you, you está bien. Sp- yo, pero, yo, pero, so do you think it's bien. proper? Sí. Es. As compared to others? Yes, it is proper. What would you say? Would you say? Agree? Would you agree? Don't Colombian? Oh. Colombian? Spanish? No, I'm saying, yeah, did you say Colombian Spanish is proper? As Are you Colombian? To- oh, any type of Spanish is better than Puerto Rican. <laughs> 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 At least on their way over here. He's Puerto yeah, Rican, yeah. believe it or not. He's Puerto Rican, yeah, believe yeah. it or not. Um, yeah, it sounds a little bit more proper. Puerto Ricans speak like a... 
kind well, of it's like a, a slang. A it's, it's a slang. I hate to say it, but it's it sounds like arrebatado. Que tu quieres? Yeah. Well, there you go. That's yeah, why I mean, that, that's why it has that nice little tone to it, bro. Like when we were younger in our days, that's how we yeah. used to get them girls, you know. So I that's that's, 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 that that's, don't know. that's cool. You know what I mean? Like I chose that. That was a decision that I made, and I understood that it was a Mexican household, but I wasn't going to change who I am to be a part of this Mexican household. I came in as a Rican. It's who I am. That's what I look like. That's that's my heritage. And if you want the real thing for this character that's how it came in and that's what they gave they gave it to me yeah, yeah. yeah awesome they were all saying pastel and he was saying bizcocho even though he's not supposed <laughs> to say that <laughs> right. for mexicans that's something way different yeah i don't know it, it's crazy to look at yeah it's, it's fucking ridiculously different <laughs> that's, that's odd how that happened i don't know how that you know yeah. what i did ask I had, I had a couple of mexicans that i worked with that in my old, in my old job and i asked them that they didn't really recognize that word like that yeah. Be, no, bicocho. Yeah. Bicocho. Like, yeah. They, I, I, that's not bad for you. Bicocho, I don't know what cake. it is. No, cake. Cake. Oh, no. Tortas for us. I've heard Torta. that before. Yeah, I've yeah, heard that they before. Call, yeah. yeah, torta. And for, I think, Mexico, it's like a. It's. Uh, like an empanada or a sandwich like a, it's or like something. A bread. Yeah, I think it's a sandwich yeah. for yeah, Cubans, yeah. And, a, and I think a torta is a. A torta? Like an empanada for Mexicans. Well, no, torta for Mexicans is like a, a sandwich. The sandwich for a sandwich. Cuban. No, 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 no for Mexicans. No, no, no. Like oh, if you go get a torta de asada, yeah. oh, okay. it's like a torta de asada. But, you know? like, yeah. but torta, I've, I've heard that before. I mean, that's Tortas how we. Cake for us. That's how they would, you know, you know, with the reggaeton artists, they would say that all the time. Repartir la torta. Like, that's that's what they were saying. Cake, like they yeah. they, they meant it as as in cake, like money. You know, like we're, we're making all this cake. You know what I'm saying? Like all this money, but that's what it was. I mean, but every every place is different. Mm-hmm. I, I think Puerto Rico. The thing with Puerto Rico is that Puerto Rico's really. Um, what's the word? Not. I'm gonna insult people. Never mind. Don't uh, do it. It's, 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 it's very uh, rule. Rule is the right word. It's I don't not, know. It's what like, like it's like a. I don't want to say a a, a a hood, but it's like very. Uh, Wouldn't you mean urban then? Urban, sure. You're it's very the, urban. The Spanish grammar. In, no, in general, in Puerto, Puerto Rico, Rico, in Puerto Rico oh, is very oh. urban for the most part. I mean, there isn't really. What's the what? What are the major cities? There's like two or three. And yeah. you got San Juan, you got Ponce, and that's about it. Like everything else is kind of very small, very humble places, very hood, if you want to call it, or urban, not not nothing rich. Rural. You know, rural. That's the word there's I'm looking a lot, for. There's a lot you know of uh, campos, too. A lot of you campo, know? A lot and of then you, you learn to talk differently. And kind mm-hmm. of, it's like, again, if you talk to someone in the hood in Chicago, they talk different than someone who grew up in a suburb, even though we all live in Illinois. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's, it's different. The language yeah. is always grows, you know. Yeah. We all speak English, but we speak it differently. Yes. Same thing with accents. Like they say, we have a Chicago accent. I don't know what that means, but whatever. And then there's people that have Chicago. New York accents. I don't feel like I got that. Or whatever. Or Chicago accent? No. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I couldn't pick it up if I even heard yeah. it. Like I know a New York accent. I know that. I've heard that before. Yeah, but do you say soda yeah. or pop? I say both. I, say I can both? probably see pop. I say pop more what than I say, say soda. Say pop? I say pop. pop is a Chicago thing. Gym shoes is a Chicago Gym thing. Sneakers. Yeah. Everybody sneakers. else says sneakers, sneakers. and yeah. tennis shoes. Sneakers. Tennis shoes. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen oh, well, when I grew up, it, it was tennis. Tennis. Yeah, my mom oh, would tennis. say, Mete buscando tennis. Zapato. Ponte yeah. los zapato. ¿Dónde lo dejaste? Joder, <laughs> papo. Así camina. Sin zapato para que aprenda. In the snow. <laughs> that way you learn. That, that wasn't my joke. Now. Yeah, I got it right. It worked. This guy's stealing material. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got, I got a cheap laugh. As long as I get a cheap laugh. Yeah, um, anywhere people can find you, your social medias or anything like that, that way people can reach out if they want. Instagram, mm-hmm. ETF Bomb. ETF Bomb. Mm-hmm. ETF Bomb. Estimated F Bomb. Embracing the F bomb, the forties. Nice. Okay. That anywhere else? Anywhere else they can find you? Um, Wendy Acosta at Facebook. Cool, sir. Enrique King's official on everything. On everything. See, everything. His social bars is underscore underscore yeah. this no, underscore man. that. No, shit. That's Enrique yours. King, right? Enrique King's official TikTok. <laughs> you can see some workouts on TikTok. You can. I, I'm all over. The John will place. watch that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gonna work on his six pack halfway there already no <laughs> never a six pack I gave up on that dream uh, um anything else you guys want to talk about for two more two more seconds or concrete rose concrete rose oh, concrete rose yeah. concrete rose yeah. 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 you have been on concrete rose you have been on concrete rose you uh, huh? You've been on Concrete Rose? Did I say that? I, I don't know. Know. No, he's, he's, the that that. he's the only one that has been there. He's not an actor. So it's, it's, I was he's the, a reader. A I professional played, reader. He's a professional yeah. reader. Professional I played the lawyer or something. Over there. 
He's oh. kidding. No. Um, Yo, yeah, let's talk about that for five minutes. Let's do um, it, man. What, what was how, you had a, a bigger part? Oh no, I mean it wasn't a bigger part. You know, I, I was able to uh, come in and and uh, John was you know John John Villanueva. Okay. Um, was nice enough to throw me a couple scenes, man. It was it was a lot of fun. I think I ended up being in like three scenes, and it was cool because he put me at the day the day that he had J T. Campos. Okay. Uh, cool. So I yeah I babysat <laughs> J T. Campos. <Nice. laughs> I did, bro. I brought. He's so crazy. You went, so you went to what when he was in L A. and all that? They were filming over no, there. No, 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 Aki. And I went to South Bend. Oh, South Bend. Okay, yeah, okay. I went to South Bend. But okay. yeah, man, I, I'm like three, four scenes. It, it was great. It was a great experience. Uh, good people. It, it was a good time. Wendy. Yeah, same. Um, I was there with JT Campos. I paid the boss lady. I remember. Yeah. I was part of your group. Yeah. I was part of your gangbanging group. I was part of it. I remember. I was the only one. And then I get amazing. killed. I get, I get killed. Oh, you got killed. I got killed. I got my head blown. See, I was rapped before that happened. So what occurred to you? I mean, I don't think we're supposed we to talk too much about, oh. talk about it. I'll yeah. just say that I died. Yeah, exactly. um, I don't think I'm coming back for the for part two. You won't uh, be in part two. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a great experience. Like, it, it was. It, it was. It was crazy. I mean, again, it was something... I found I found out randomly because like one of my buddies my buddy was like hey uh, I have a couple other friends that that are gonna go do this and it's all Hispanics you should try because he knew I was getting into acting and I was like eh, whatever I try it I mean at the end of the day I mean I'll, I'll do background I'll do whatever you know as long as I'm getting my feet wet and what I want to do you mm-hmm. know screw it um, so I think I reached out and he called me and um, we had a really good conversation we had a good conversation for about an hour um, about acting and what you know what he was looking for and this and this and um, I don't know. Maybe the conversation kind of got you know gave you know caught his attention of me or whatever. And uh, I think he called me like a couple of days later. He's like, "Hey, what if I give you a couple lines?" I'm like, "Okay, cool, whatever." You know, I, I'm, again, I'm, I wasn't expecting anything. I, was, yeah. I just wanted to help out. You know, where I wanted, where, where I could. You know, that's kind of my mentality. And he gave me a couple lines, and um, I did it. And then the funny thing was, a lot of people reached out to me afterwards, like, "Oh yeah, that looked really good. It looked really good. It looked really good." And I'm like, I mean, this is why I kind of want to see it. I'm like, I, I need to see this because I'm like, if people saying whatever, and I'm like, because you know, you're always kind of your your, yeah. your your worst critic. Yeah, yeah, right. Like I'm I'm very kind of critical with stuff. Um, but I'm excited. It was a lot of fun. You know, it was, it was, a, it was an experience. A lot of people. A lot of you know, great. A lot of people. The locations. Yeah. Yeah, insane was, locations. Yeah. You had more. You had more scenes. Than yeah, the that. hangar, the dining room, uh, a strip club. Those were always fun. That was fun. Those I always. met a couple. They were nice. Uh. They were nice. No, they really were. They really were. I'm sure they were. Did you, did you learn a few things there? Um, Some people are into that. I don't know. No, I don't think I did. I can't do a split. So when they were doing a split, I'm like, <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. Um, Wish I had singles. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it was it was really fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. I think he said he was going to do like a red carpet kind of thing. And I'm like, I'm, I'm so Yeah, kind. I think they're doing it in South Bend. I just, I'm waiting for dates, man. Yeah, I can't me wait too. to I'm, I'm excited. I'm really I'm totally excited. excited. Just, it's going to be fun. More just to run into, just to see everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, just to, you know, you know, say, like, we're all part of this. Like, it's yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, was, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, I don't, it'd I don't be know. nice to see, like, how many we were. Because yeah. from what we saw, there's a lot of us. Yeah. So that'd be nice to see under one roof. Can I be your plus one? Can I be your date for the red yeah, carpet? If you can, if you can fit in a nice red dress, oh, I will get fit. I will. <laughs> I mean, he's he's dressed up like a chick before, so I mean, you did you did yeah, a, I, yeah for Halloween. Who'd you do? Oh, Marcus. you did Claire Red. Yeah, but that was no, different. I just Redfield. wore like a low cut. You thing. did a uh, what did you do? You dressed up as a. Um, I just wore like a low cut thing. He dressed like Halloween. Yeah, tube top. Yeah, kind of. Do sort you play? Were you a video game fan? Video game yeah. fan? No. So there was these games called Resident Evil. I know, oh, my son okay. plays Resident so Evil. That's a, a scary a char- ass game. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a character that's called Jill Valentine. Uh, and she dresses with like a tube top and a little skirt or whatever. So he, I had straps. He dressed, I had straps. <laughs> he dressed like her. <laughs> it was a tank top. Get it tank straight. Top. <laughs> Get it, it straight. Yeah, my son plays that game. Um, yeah. Anyways. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Like, yes. I, I really am. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm super excited. Be, it's going to be a good time. Um, a lot of a lot of Latinos, man. Yeah. It's that was just a goal of mine to be a in a film with Latinos. Yeah, man. It's like you know the, the, his idea, and, and it, he just brought a whole bunch of Latinos together, and we did some cool shit. Yes, we did. You know what I mean? And and just being around that dude and listening to John John and. 
energy yeah. was phenomenal. That, that I was watching his podcast fire, that man. he was on recently. And I, I was getting like, oh man, let's go, do, yeah. let's go do some work. Yeah, he's let's fire. go do some work. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Um, it was exciting. But anyways, that that's something we're, we're all obviously looking forward yeah. to. Mm-hmm. Um, did you guys have a good time? It's great. It's my first time and I'm enjoying and I hope I did a good job, but I loved it. You did amazing. Thank oh, you. Wendy, you're amazing. Yes, yes. You are amazing. <laughs> um, I, I, again, I just want to thank you guys. I know you came a long way. Appreciate I really appreciate you, you coming down. Um, whenever you guys want to come back, you guys are more than welcome. Um, and if you guys have any projects that you're working on, don't forget us. Uh, we can, John can act <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> if you want a reader, I can read for the right price. He can read for the right price. He can read the script in the film. Whenever you're recording, if somebody needs a line, he'll be that guy. He's the guy. He's, He's that the guy. script reader. Um, <laughs> I think we're going to call it a night. Yeah. Awesome. Again, I appreciate fantastic. you guys coming down and joining us here. Um, Jonathan, you got anything else? No. You're good? I'm just thinking about the... Working out. He mentioned about the going to Philly, Philly cheesesteaks. Oh, That's all I'm thinking about. I was thinking about yeah. that red dress already, how he's going to fit into that yeah, red dress. Yeah. Um, you're good? Yeah. Missy, everything okay with yes. you? Yes. Sir? Good. All right. Bye. Bye. I'd like to thank everybody who tuned in. Like, comment, and subscribe. Remember, everything we said is in our opinion. And if you don't agree with it, I got three words for you. Thanks for listening. 